Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to this quick tutorial of animation in Blender and we are going to do the rolling dice exercise which is also a great way to get an introduction to physics in Blender. So, as a good habit, let's change our Blender file units to miles or meters. And if you haven't done it already, go to File, then in Blender User Preferences, go to System and select CUDA and save user settings. And for this to take effect, we have to select the Cycles Render up here. And in the red tab, we have to select GPU Compute. Ok, now let's start with creating a plane from the Shift A menu and scale it up 100 times with S. Now move your cube a little bit up and we want to enter in Edit Mode and press Ctrl R and if you scroll up with the mouse wheel, we can add 4 vertical cuts like this and we press again Ctrl R to add more for horizontal cuts. With Ctrl Tab, choose faces so we can select 1, 2, 3, or 4 faces. And now the idea is that we start creating the faces of a dice from 1 to 6 black dots. And the trick here is when you select the face, you press Alt E to extrude individual faces. You have to always enter the same value. Mine is minus 0.05 to create this cavity. And now we repeat this process with Alt E for the other faces and make sure we extrude the same amount on each face. After creating all the other faces from 1 to 6 black dots, we go back to object mode with tap and in the modifier separator, let's add a subdivision surface modifier that is going to divide every single face the amount of times we set in the view parameter. And tree should do the work. Now in the left panel we also need to select smooth. And as you can see, the circles of the black dots haven't much definition. And that's because we need to add more definition by entering in edit mode, select all the black dots faces, press again Alt E and select individual faces and this way we will add another ring of edges. And now it's looking great, it's looking good, we have more definition. Don't lose this selection, don't press anywhere, we are going to need this selection. And the next thing are the materials. So let's go to the material separator and we are going to rename this material to black dots. And set this to almost black and click in a sign. Now if you press Shift Z, you can have a render preview and see that everything is black, that's not what we want. We want to add a new material, so we can press this plus icon and rename it to white dice or something similar. Now we can press Ctrl I to select the opposite of our selection and press apply in the white dice material. And with Shift Z we can see immediately that the black dots are not covering the circle. They are not perfect circles, which means we need to select the other faces that we have created, that are overlapping. Now let's press again Ctrl I to select the black dots faces. And the trick here is to select one more ring of edges with Ctrl plus, like this. And as you can see, Ctrl plus and Ctrl minus adds or removes the nearby edge rings to our selection. And that's great, because now if we go to black dots materials, you can assign again and now it's going to assign on the other faces that are overlapping and as you can see the black material covers the circle perfectly. Let's select this light and also use notes so we can increase the intensity to 1000. And let's go to node editors, let's just give some gloss to this material, to this white dice material, just a very simple mix shader mix it with a diffuse shader and a glossy shader like this you can press shift a to add new shades and something like 0.4 should do the work for roughness and you can change the color if you want now let's just add the material to the ground something bluish like this and we can go ahead and duplicate the dice with shift d one two three or as many times as you want we just need a plane from the Shift A menu and if you want to create a plane right in the middle of our cubes, we can select both dices 
and press Shift S to choose cursor to select it. And now if we press Shift A and add a plane, the plane will be created right in the middle of those two dices. And we can resize it to something like this and rotate it to 30 or 40 degrees. Now we only need to go to the object separator and down here in the cycle settings we want to uncheck ray visibility to the camera and shadow. This way this plane will not be rendered and will have no shadows. It's just to help us make the dices roll. So let's go to the last separator which is where the physics are. And with the ground and with the plane selected we want to add a rigid body and in type we want to say it's passive since they will not move. Now for the dices we also add a rigid body and now we say the type is active since we want them to move and interact with the other objects in our scene. Now if we press Shift A you can already see that everything is working fine and you can press Shift A again to stop. You can also press Shift left arrow to go to the frame 0. Let's just go down here and push another window like this and select timeline and now you can adjust the end to whatever you want. I'm gonna add more frames and I'm gonna put 500 frames. And maybe put the dice a bit higher also like this and try to find a nice movement for the dice. And after that you can press 0 to enter in the active camera view and we can select our camera right here in the dotted line with the right click mouse and we can move it in the local X axis by pressing one time in G and two times on the X. This way the camera only moves in its own axis and it's quite useful because for instance if you press two times on Z your camera will move back and forward perpendicularly and we can rotate in the Z axis with R and by pressing Z until we find a good position for the camera to catch what is going on. That's our objective, we want to have a good angle of what is going on. Now I'm gonna adjust a bit more the plane and rotate one of the dices and put it higher. And as you can see the dices are not rolling too much, it looks like they stop at 250 frames. That's because we need to change the rigid body cache, so we can create bigger simulations. So let's go to this tab, and down here, where it says rigid body cache, we say how many frames we want to simulate. And now as you can see the blender simulates a bit more time, and the dices roll a bit more. Now we also want to play with the friction and bounciness of each dice that you can find in the rigid body that we had it. And basically friction if set to zero will leave the dice sliding almost forever. And bounciness of one will basically leave the dice jumping around a bit more. You have to find a nice balance between those two options. And now that we are almost done we want to press Shift Z and we can see that it's a bit dark on the right and to solve this we can duplicate with Shift D this light and we have two options, either you put the light a bit far away or you decrease the light intensity. Ok, now that's looking good and before rendering I want to show you how to give a more realistic touch to your animations from now on and we will use depth of field and motion blur which are very easy to set up. So let's select the dice closer to us and press Shift S to select cursor to select it. And now in Shift A we can create the empty plane axis. And we can call it camera target or camera focus. Now if we select the camera and go down here in the depth of field we can select for the focus our empty we created. Let's set it in the camera view to see what is going on with zero and move the empty a bit closer and when pressing shift Z we can already see that this is taking effect, we can see that the other eyes is getting a bit blurry, that's because the camera is focusing on our empty and that's great. For me 0 0.08 will do the work in the size. Now for the motion blur we can find it at the bottom of the render tab and down here we have the shutter option 
let's set this to 1.35 for now. Let's also find a frame where the dices are in motion, where they are moving well. Something around here. And we can't see this taking effect in preview mode. We really need to press F12 to take a render. And now you can see that the motion blur is taking effect on our image. And if we increase the shutter of the motion blur, the effect of the motion blur will be much more visible. Mine is set to 1.2. Now finally we have everything ready to render. Let's just say that we want this to be 100. The start frame I think doesn't need to be zero because the dices are falling and they take some time to reach the camera. And if I press shift left arrow to go to the beginning of our animation and press shift A, we can see that maybe 30 is enough to start rendering. And for the end frames, I believe that 420 is good, as you can see. And now if you want a smooth animation like the one I showed you at the beginning, we can select 60 frames. But be careful, because this is going to duplicate the amount of frames that you are going to need to render. And here we can select where then the frames will go, and as a good practice, I always have a folder called frames, or similar, and say dice animation underscore, like this, and press accept. Now you can choose the file extension, and the amount of samples of the final render as well, and you know that the more samples, the more slow it will be, but the more smooth it will look, you will have less noise. And now you only need to press animation and that's it guys. You have done an animation with dices in just a couple of minutes. I think it's pretty easy and the depth of field and the motion blur give a real nice touch to our animation. So thanks for watching guys and subscribe for weekly Blender and game development tutorials.